Hey everyone, today I've headed out for a little stroll around Karawatha Forest, which is one of the larger bushland reserves in my local area. And I quite often find some pretty interesting stuff here, but it is winter at the moment, so today could be an exception. Either way, let's see what we can find. Before we get into it, I'd just like to mention that the narration in this video is a bit different compared to my usual for these outdoor type videos. In that instead of just filming stuff and then recording narration at home after the fact, I narrated on the spot. In a way, I feel like it's better in the sense that it feels a little bit more natural, but also the audio quality is kind of compromised as I of course can't bring my microphone set up out into the bush with me. So there's benefits and drawbacks and I'd be interested to hear what you think is the better option. Would you like to see more videos done in this fashion or should I stick to my usual method? Okay, so right off the bat here, I got a few logs. Uh, let's see if we can find something. Eh, not the greatest start. Another log here, let's give it a check. Oh, a bit hard to see, but here is some sort of terrestrial flatworm, so a member of the Platyhelminthes. Oh, goodness, I love saying that name. I think like a lot of terrestrial flatworms, this species is probably a predator. Many of them feed on soft prey like slugs and earthworms, but sometimes they target arthropods like millipedes as well. Up ahead, we've got a tree with some loose bark on it, and this can be a good place to find some cool stuff, especially huntsmen, but you never know. Um, nothing at all apart from a caterpillar there. Oh, oh, got a scorpion here. Hi. I have seen these a handful of times around Karawatha. So this is a Hormurus species, maybe Hormurus wagiensis, but I'm not entirely sure, so that's a pretty tentative guess. It's definitely best to stick with genus level for identifying this guy. Hello? Now these Hormurus, they're very docile scorpions and their venom is really mild as well. And as a matter of fact, I've handled a lot of these, both in the wild and in captivity, and I've never been pinched nor stung. So this one, it's probably a sub-adult. I don't think it's mature because I've seen them a good deal bigger than this, but it's still a decently, whoops, still a decently sized individual. And I think this scorpion is done with the spotlight, so I am just going to put the log back. So now I'm in the kind of spot that's really good for huntsmen. There's a lot of these tall, smooth-barked eucalyptus trees, and wherever the bark is peeling off, which is pretty common, is a great spot to look for them. I don't really have much hope for this one because it's a very narrow strip. And I was, oh well there is a jumping spider down there. Hi. But yeah, apart from that, nothing much. Well, maybe I spoke too soon because I saw something under here and hello. Someone's a little bit skittish. Hi. Okay, so this is another juvenile. It's Holconia imminis, which at this point has become something of a familiar face on this channel. Now, one of the ways I can tell what species it is, is because of that. Okay. Um, okay, if you're gonna be, oh, oh, there's, oh, scorpion. There's a scorpion as well. Wow. I was having such a bad day with the bark and then we get a two in one. This is amazing. There you are. So what I was trying to say before you very disrespectfully decided to bolt was that this species can be readily distinguished by the presence of that bold black median stripe that runs part way down the abdomen. And on top of that, it's not visible at the moment from this angle, but there are pretty distinctive bands on the legs. Now, Holconia eminis is quite a big species. They get a lot bigger than this. I think the adults tend to live higher up because I only ever seem to find juveniles. Now that I've got her, her? I don't know, it's hard to tell at this size. 
Now that I've got it out into the light, we can get a better look at this. Can that crow shut up? <sighs> uh, now that we can have a better look at this huntsman, uh, we can get a better look at her. What did I even just... Yes, thank you very much, Crow, for interrupting me. You've really messed up with my brain today, and now the spider's gone. Yeah, so this video is really going to plan, as we can see. Yeah, so at this point, I'm probably just going to film the spider while the extremely loud crow in the background provides all the background music I'll need. Mate, I think that dinosaurs would rather be extinct than have descendants like you. Ah, <sighs> my goodness. Okay, so now I've got the spider on my hand, and she was uh, a little bit skittish at first, but huntsmen, at least from my experience, they tend to calm down pretty quickly. And especially the ones I keep at home, the ones that I've been handling fairly often, they are really quite placid and mellow, and they don't tend to okay, they don't tend to bolt onto my back like this idiot. And yes, it is on my back. So I think at this point the Huntsman has probably had enough of me, so I'm just going to let it go back onto the tree. And uh, Champ, I don't think it's very smart to be standing out in the open, especially seeing as... Yeah, there we go. Especially seeing as a crow seems to be nearby, as I suspect from the noises that I can hear. Let's see what we have under here. Oh, hello. Hello. Another scorpion. And this one looks quite a fair bit bigger than the last one. I'd say this one is an adult. Come on. Okay, so the scorpion isn't exactly keen on moving, which is um, typical, to say the least. But you can see that the body of this scorpion is just perfectly adapted for this lifestyle. And of course, by that I mean living beneath rocks and logs and ambushing its prey. It's got a very flat body so it can really squeeze into tight crevices and those big hard pincers at the front are every bit as good for defense as they are for offense. They can be effectively used as a shield to block the entrance of its burrow should something be attempting to attack it. That being said, while these scorpions are predominantly ambush predators, at night, they may emerge from their shelters to actively hunt their prey, but they aren't quite as active in lifestyle as some other scorpions like the, like the boothids and whatnot. And one of these was also one of my very first pet invertebrates. So seeing these guys is always a little bit nostalgic. So, back you go. Oh yes, how could I forget? Getting scorpions off you is... Oh, no, never mind. You okay there? Ooh. Ooh, hello. And this looks like something different. I don't think this is Holconia imanis. Ah, this is an Isopeda. Uh, oh, yep, that would be Isopeda vasta. So, the reason I can tell this is Isopeda vasta is those stand still. Okay, you're gonna play that game like that, are you? You little shit. Ah, uh, yep, yeah. okay, stay there, stay there, that's good. Okay, so the way I can tell this is Isopeda Vasta is those Chelicerae, I said stand still. Those Chelicerae are... <sighs> We're gonna be here forever, aren't we? Those Chelicerae are black, and they're almost completely glabrous, which means without hair, as you can tell by their rather sleek, polished appearance. And this looks like a mature female. Isopeda vasta is, I wouldn't say a small huntsman, but it's not especially large compared to some other species. And this is about as big as they get. I've kept these a couple times before, and they're quite a fun species. They got one hell of a feeding response, so feeding time is always a treat. Anyway, I'm going to say goodbye to this little girl, and 
you know, much as I called her a little shit at the beginning, she was a lot more cooperative than the last one. Oh, okay, looks like I've loosened the bark. I guess I'll have to let her go somewhere else. Let me just smack you in the butt a few times so that you can get off here and get under that other piece of bark. Wow, your bum is very, very soft. Yeah, so please don't quote that one out of context. It sounds really, really creepy. No, don't stand out in the open. That extremely annoying crow is still following me. And you're not going to be very safe there. Look, bark is right there. Just get under it. Get under it. There we go. No! There we go, that wasn't too hard now, was it? You see, I care about your safety, okay? Now, don't make me walk you home again. You are mature, I shouldn't have to teach you this. What do we have here? Oh, rather interesting looking cockroach, and I've... Okay, that lighting is terrible. I've heard of this species before, and the proper name is on the tip of my tongue. Um, even though I'd rather not have a cockroach on the tip of my tongue. But it does unfortunately escape me at the moment, so I'm going to have to chuck that one up later, once I've topped up my info a little bit. But yeah, and this is a native cockroach species, unlike the ones that you find around your house, which are a whole lot more repulsive than this, i got to admit. Um, goodbye. So this here is a curious little mollusk, a semi-slug. And it's called that because, in a way, it almost looks halfway between a snail and a slug. It has a small shell, large enough to afford it some sort of protection, but too small for it to completely retreat into in the sense that a more conventional snail is capable of. That being said, these, and slugs for that matter, are still taxonomically snails. All right, I was just peeling some bark off a log and this beauty, this beauty who is playing hide and seek with me and is both very good and very bad at it at the same time, fell out. It is, of course, another Holconia imminis and even though I encounter these on quite a regular basis, they focused. <laughs> oh, bloody camera. They never get old. And you can see here just how effective their camouflage is. Their patterning is what's known as disruptive coloration. So it breaks up the shape of the spider and makes it quite difficult for its overall form to be distinguished against the backdrop. That is, unless of course it decides to move, which this idiot seems to be very, very fond of doing. So I'll let this decent sized fellow go back where it came from. I think it's a she. And off it goes. Okay, you might be tired of spiders at this point, and if you are tired of spiders, then why are you subscribed to this channel? But here is one of the largest wild Holconia imminis I've seen. Unlike the other two I've found, this is actually an adult, and it's a mature male. You can tell that by those palpable bulbs at the front, uh, which make it look like he's wearing a pair of boxing gloves. And he uses oh, those ants are going up my sleeve. This is going to be fun. And he uses those to- out oh, they're biting me! <laughs> Sorry, spider. I have some difficulties. And the spider's just sitting there, too. He can handle it a lot better than I can, 
and you can also see he has partially regrown one of his legs. Obviously, he must have lost that at some earlier point. Now, he's not going to fully grow it back because, like I said before, he is already mature. So, he's not going to be molting again, which is not going to give him the chance to regenerate that leg any further. But, either way, he's still got seven left. So, you know, when you're a spider, you can afford to lose a leg or two. So, most of the time I've been walking around here, it's been fairly dry eucalyptus forest. But here I'm heading into quite a different habitat. This is a sort of swampland, and it is dominated by these trees. They are called melaleuca, also known as paperbark trees. And of course, that is due to the nature of... Oh, fungi. That is due to the nature of their bark. At this point, I'm kind of on a border between these two habitats. Over here, we got the Melaleuca Swamp. But if you look a little bit further ahead, especially on the left, it's drier and instead it's dominated by eucalyptus trees, as is more typical for this area. To anyone who pays any attention to fungi around here, this is probably... Oh, whoops. This is likely to be a familiar sight to anyone who pays any attention to fungi around southeast Queensland. These vibrant orange brackets that are very conspicuous are the fruiting bodies of Pycnoporus coccineus. This is a saprotrophic fungus, meaning it feeds on decaying organic matter, in this case decaying wood, and it's very common to find the fruiting bodies of these fungi growing on fallen logs. Now the main body of the fungus, which is the network of threads called the mycelium, would be in this case distributed throughout the interior of this stick and it will be breaking it down. And saprotrophic fungi play quite an important ecological role in that they return organic matter to the soil. So that wraps this video up, I hope you found it enjoyable. And again, let me know what you think about the audio and narration. So if you like my content, then feel free to subscribe and check out some of my other uploads. Thank you very much for watching, that is it from me, and I shall see you again very soon.